I go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. One of the nice things about being a Catholic children is that we have so many saints, and for each need of ours, there's a saint who's in charge. Today is the feast day of St. Matilda. Sometimes she's called St. Maud by the English. And of her it is said that she never remembered anything bad that was ever done to her. And she always did good to others. And then I learned today something I didn't know about St. Matilda. St. Matilda is the patroness of bad children. I read that this morning and thought, hmm, bad children. I've seen that someplace before. And as a matter of fact, just yesterday, we had an extraordinary quantity of bad children at the Mass, at some of the morning Masses. I think some were visitors and some, well, weren't used to a different kind of a routine. We're getting a little sort of antsy as children will. And some of them forgot that you don't run in church. You must be very quiet and respectful. And the church is not a playground. And I'm afraid their parents must have been distracted. So there you have it. Well, why is St. Matilda the patroness of bad children? She lived over a thousand years ago, a thousand plus one hundred, eleven hundred years ago, and she was the queen of Germany. And her husband liked to go hunting. He's called Henry the Fowler because he would hunt birds. They got along very well together. And they were married for about 20 years, and then the king died. She had about five children, I think, one girl and the rest were boys. And the only mistake that she made as a mother was that she rather favored her second son. She thought he would be a good king after his father, and that wasn't well received by the eldest son. Well, as it t turned out, the eldest boy, Otto, he got to be the Holy Roman Emperor next, except sometimes he wasn't so holy. So he got together with his brother, the one who had been the favorite of the queen, and they decided the queen was spending too much money on churches and monasteries. And she founded a big monastery with about two or three thousand monks, and their job was to chant the praises of God all day long and all night long without intermission. And she also gave lots of money to the poor. So what did they do? They told her, you're going, you go to the convent. And they took all of her money. And she never complained a bit about it. Well, as time went on, her son, the Holy Roman Emperor Otto, realized it wasn't so easy to be in charge. Sometimes if you're not in charge, you think, well, he shouldn't have done that, or why did she do this? But it's not so easy to be in charge. And he had all sorts of problems running the empire. You would if you have an empire. And the people that run the empire right now, they have lots of problems too, I'm sure. Well, one day the two brothers got, talk, got to talk and said, I wish we could ask mom what to do because she always seemed to know. So they went to their mother and they apologized. And she never remembered a thing that they had done bad against them. And they brought her back and they gave her her money back and they honored her and she gave them good advice. Now, in today's epistle, it's Daniel. And when Daniel comes, you always know it's, it's worthwhile listening to. And he's praying for Almighty God to forgive not his sins, he was a faithful prophet, and he always prayed, but to forgive the sins of this holy city and a whole country. A bit like our country today, or even our city here. He, he said, we're guilty, we sinned, but forgive us, O Lord. And if we pray that way, our Lord will hear our prayer and he will forgive us. In the Gospel, our Lord's telling the Jews that you're so wicked, I'm going to leave you, and you'll be looking for me, and then you won't be able to find me. That means that now during Lent, we have to take advantage of our chances. This is our opportunity to have a good Lent and to be sorry for all of our sins. And if you go to our Lord, just as the, as the children went to their mother, Queen Saint Matilda, and say that we're sorry, if we're really sorry, our Lord will forgive us. Of course he will, because he is most merciful and loving. Let's remember that, shall we, during Lent. All the time we commit sins, like children who forget that you're not supposed to run in church, and certainly not right past the pulpit, whilst 
a deacon is giving a sermon, which would be very disrespectful. It's unusually wicked, even for a child. It doesn't matter. Even if we have a sort of a big sin or a scandalous sin, if we go to our Lord and they tell the priest about it in confession, of course, it will be forgiven. That's another wonderful thing about being a Catholic. We have confession. God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.